What's up, YouTube? Robbie Babes back again, and today we have a head to head matchup for the ages. Okay, let's not exaggerate here, but we do have a great head to head matchup coming up today between the Wismac Rouleau and the Wismac Rouleau. One's the DNA 200, one is the RX 200. Which one will win? Let's find out. <laughs> That's right guys, today we have a head-to-head -head matchup between the Wismac Rouleau DNA 200 and the Wismac Rouleau RX 200. Now the whole purpose of this review is pretty much going to be to find out, is the DNA 200 worth the extra money? We know it's more expensive, we know it's a lot more expensive, and the big question is, is it worth it to get the DNA 200 version of this, or is it worth it to get the RX 200? Which one's better? That's what we're hoping to find out today. Let's talk about battery life though before we get down and dirty. Typically, I like to do battery life at the end of my videos, but at the end of this one instead, there'll be a little bit of a preview as to what's to come with at least one of these devices. Um, but again, that will be at the end of this video. If you want to fast forward to it, by all means you can, or if you want to watch through, that works too. Now, if you are thinking about, thinking about getting one of these devices and you're not sure if the DNA 200 is really worth the extra money because it's quite a bit more, then that's what I'm hoping to help you out with today. The battery life in both these is about the same and they both use three 18650 batteries as opposed to two like some of the other devices. Now there are some good features, especially on the RX200 that I really like about the battery, but we'll get into that in the up close section. But at the same time, there's also some features about the batteries that I like on the DNA200 that again, we'll get up to, that we'll get to in the up close as well. So both these devices do have their pros and cons for sure, uh, but battery life seems to be about the same for me. Eight to nine hours battery life, right around the 90 to 100 watt range for me personally. Of course, as you increase your wattage, you are going to end up decreasing your battery life, common sense. But uh, basically, um, I unfortunately only have one married set of three 18650 batteries. As I'm sure you know, it's very hard to marry three batteries together when you're so used to marrying two at a time. I actually have to go out and get three new batteries just to marry them to, to these two devices, just so I could use it. And I will say this, the Wismac DNA 200 was purchased by me personally. The, the Wismac Rouleau RX 200 was actually sent to me on loan, and I'll get to why it's on loan at the end of the video as well. Basically, what, I've, what I'm here to say is, you know, which one is the better one to get? And I'm gonna put my personal opinion in it as much as I can, because I did go out and spend the money on the DNA. And, I, and overall, I guess what I'm trying to do is justify, was the money rightful, or properly spent, or should I have probably spent less money on the RX200? Um, so that's again the whole goal today, and Hopefully we'll answer that question for you guys and you guys can decide on your own which one of these devices you like best. All right guys, we are down and dirty with the Wismac Rouleau, both the RX200 and the DNA200. We have both of them side by side right now, but we're gonna move the DNA200 off to the side and focus on the RX200 for now. We'll move on to the DNA200 later on. So the Rouleau RX200, here we go right here. A little bit of a different color scheme as well. You notice the DNA200 with more of the silver and gray. This one's kind of like this light greenish and white color. Um, put that off to the side for now and check out what we get in the packaging. So of course, if I remove this styrofoam thing here, you got your user manual down below. You have a little bit of a warning here. So there you go right there. Now here's your user manual. Again, if you want to flip through it, this is the RX200 quick guide. A few uh, little details in here. Just kind of flip through it. Again, if you really want to pause it, you can. But honestly, I don't really focus too much on this, so I'll just push, put this off to the side for now. Moving below there, you do have a charge cable, and uh, that is it. That's what you get with the RX200. Very simple, very, I wouldn't say cheap packaging, but I would say affordable packaging, I guess. Uh, given the price tag, you can't really, you know, ask for too much. Put that all away, just put it off to the side now. And moving on to the RX200. So, turn this on, five clicks on. It's on. Batteries are just back in here. As you see, I do have three married 18650 LG HG2s in here right now. We'll uh, put that away for a second. Let's talk about the actual overall device. You do have a update port slash charge port. This will charge um, as well if you wanted to charge them right through the device. Personally, I would probably charge it through the uh, through an actual battery charger than doing it through the device. It's going to take forever if you do it through the device, but if you wanted to, you could. Um, just know that there is that option. Moving on, let's talk about this little ring here. This is actually something I really like. It's on both the RX200 and the DNA200. And what this does is it actually gives you a little bit of a lip for your 22 millimeter tanks and RDAs. So it sits nicely and, and, nice and nice and flush. And it doesn't actually dig into the actual 
top pieces either. So that's actually really nice as well. All right guys, so to turn this on, just simply five clicks on and it's also five clicks off. Now, uh, first thing I wanna talk about, you do have a charge port slash an update port. Let's talk about the update port really quickly on this because this is a huge thing that I really wish the DNA 200 had on their eScribe software. And that is of course the fact that this software is compatible with Max. Thank you RX200, thank you uh, Joytech for making an actual Mac compatible program to update this with. Now of course the update program is super, super simple. It's basically you download a file, you plug in your device and it'll update for you. The eScribe software has so much more to offer which we're not really gonna talk about too much in this video in particular, other than adding it as a pro for the DNA 200. The actual eScribe review will be in the DNA three-way review I have coming out very shortly, which is going to be a direct review between the Wismec Rouleau DNA 200, the VaporShark DNA 200, and the VT 200. Sorry to get off topic there, but I just wanted to mention that, so the eScribe will be fully reviewed in that video, not in this one. Um, but just know that there is a ton more features in the eScribe than there are in this. But again, you know, you get what you pay for kind of thing. So moving on from there, a few things I wanna talk about. Um, this does do nickel, titanium, and stainless steel temperature control, which is a huge plus, but it also has a really cool feature that I think is something that I wasn't expecting to see in a device like this, but it's a really big pro in my mind. And that is of course the fact that it maxes out at nine volts, um, which is very good for 318650s. It will uh, max out where it should. And when it does hit nine volts, Let's say you're at a 0.5 ohm recoil and you want to hit it all the way at 200. It actually won't let you. It'll actually max out at about 172, 173, or whatever the equivalent of 9 volts is in wattage. That is a huge feature to have, and I really like that feature as well. Moving on from there, you can switch modes. Three clicks, one, two, three. You're now in temperature control mode. And let's see if we can see this here. Get a close-up. Should say NI right above there for nickel. There we go. We got a close-up. One, two, one, two, three. Now we're in titanium, one, two, three. Now we're in stainless steel, one, two, three. Now we're back to wattage mode. Super, super easy to navigate this thing. I mean, way more easier than the DNA 200 in my mind, um, just based on my personal opinion. Now, if you already have a DNA 200 and you're not new to the DNA 200, it's going to be um, quite simple to navigate, obviously, once you get used to it, but it does take time to get used to the DNA 200 chip. This one is right out of the box, super easy to use, and uh, just really easy to to check out. And let's go back to temperature mode here for a second. Oops, as I turned it off. One, two, three. We're in temperature mode. We'll use nickel as an example, but if you want to adjust the wattage in temperature mode, one, two, three, four. I think I did five clicks. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, one, two, three, four. Now we have the wattage here. We're still in nickel mode as you can see on the side, but now we can actually adjust the wattage in the nickel mode here very simply by just scrolling up and down. And uh, one thing I do like about this over the DNA 200 in general is the fact that the DNA 200 seems to have two speeds, turtle and cheetah. Uh, it's very hard to get uh, precise wattages on that device or even measurements and temperature or whatever, uh, just because it does scroll so fast. And of course it does slow, scroll really slow if you're just going up by one. It's basically equivalent to just doing this. In fact, this might even be faster on the DNA 200 version. Uh, this one does have a much easier and much more fluent scroll motion. I find at least. It does skip some numbers sometimes, but it's not quite as fast as DNA 200 is. There we go, we're back to power mode. Um, same thing again, powering up. We have actual focus now, or powering down, sorry. Stealth off, or sorry, stealth on. And power and down, stealth off. Powering up. Again, I don't think it does anything in any modes, and it does not. Um, but yeah, so powering down is to do stealth mode. Uh, Power and up should, oh, sorry, that's right. Power and up locks the resistance on here. Uh, but of course, because we don't have a coil on here, it won't actually lock. So let's grab a tank right now. I'm gonna be using the Z-Pal Coral Tank for this demonstration, because it's my new favorite tank right now. Um, at least it's up there with this and the ceramic are probably my two favorites. There we go. So we've locked the resistance in on temperature mode. So it only works in temperature mode, it does not work on power mode. Um, so that's good to know, just in case anyone's uh, wondering. Turn it back to power mode. There we go, we're back to power mode. Um, now we are gonna do some tests on here to test the voltage drop on both these devices and see if any of them have any significant voltage drop to them. It will be interesting to see how it holds up. Now if it's turned off, it's turned off, up and down, we'll flip the screen. Up and down, flip screen when it's turned off, turn it back on, up and down now locks it.
and up and down Dunlock as well. Uh, moving on from there, it does have the uh, round robin for Fahrenheit to Celsius. So if you want to go to Celsius in temp mode, we go up and we just keep on going up until we hit the Fahrenheit. It does actually stop at 600, which is nice. So we hold it and stop 600. As you can see, I can't go to 100 until I've hit it again. And now I'm into 100 degrees Celsius, not Fahrenheit. So I like that round robin feature and I like how it actually stops. A lot of devices don't stop when you hit 600 or when you hit the maximum, I should say. Uh, they just keep on cycling through to, to Celsius. This one actually stops so you don't end up accidentally scrolling past it, which is a huge feature in my mind. But uh, again, just wanted to point that out as well. Now, one thing I do want to talk about, and I mentioned this earlier, is the batteries. So we'll turn this off. And let's take out the batteries for a second. I'm just going to take these out and I'll come back real quick. All right, guys, so looking at the battery battery sled itself, you will notice one particular thing. This is a DNA 200. This is the RX 200. I know it's weird. The silver and gray actually has these this weird green color on the inside, whereas one with the ring the weird green color on the outside actually has a black inside. It's all mixed up, but anyways, these are the two battery sleds, and you may actually notice something in particular that's a little bit different about these, and that is that the DNA 200 has the button top adapter on it or the button top capacitors, whereas the RX 200 just has a flat top, uh, making it a little bit difficult to use some batteries in the RX 200. The DNA 200 will take pretty much any 18650 battery you throw in it. Um, but again, I do recommend marrying the batteries for either of these devices to be safe. Uh, I have heard of an instance where someone had unmarried batteries in here in the RX 200 and uh, it shorted out and vented. I don't know if there's any merit to that, if there's any truth to that, but that's just something I've heard. I will confirm that in when, when we do some tests with this thing on a different episode uh, or on a different series that I'm on, a uh, little hint hint for the, end, the, the ending here. Make sure you know where your battery's going. They, do, they are marked pretty clearly negative, negative, and then the center one here in front is positive uh, up as well, or is positive up, these two are negative up. Uh, same thing on this one, negative up, negative up, and then positive up. Uh, so again, just something to note, just one thing I wanted to point out was the battery slide in there. Um, whether it makes a difference or not, you know, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. If you know what you're doing, it shouldn't, but uh, of course, it's always something to keep an eye on. All right, guys, so I wanted to show you this whole nine volt uh, maximum thing here in person. So what I have here, we actually have the crown tank with the 0.5 ohm coil in here. As you can see, it's reading at 7.01 volts right now at 104 watts. Let's crank it up and see where it actually maxes out at. So here we are maxing it out. And this should stop at 9 volts exactly, and it did. So the maximum you're getting out of a 0.5 ohm coil is 162 watts. Um, and that's as high as it'll go. It cannot go any higher than that. It does max out at a true 9 volts. Um, so again, that's, that's actually a good thing as well. Let's actually move on to the voltage test on this one and see how it performs. And then what we'll do is do uh, the DNA 200 version of this and uh, go through the features on that one as well. And then we'll do the voltage test on that one too. So uh, here we go. Let's do the voltage test on this. All right guys, so we're back. We have a little voltmeter on here. I know these things aren't always the most accurate, but this one's the most accurate one I could find. And unfortunately I have nothing better than it right now to prove it on. But what we're hoping to see is a relatively closely matching number on the volts here and the volts on here. Now uh, let's see what we're looking at right now. Right now we're looking at, it looks like 6.04, 6.84 maybe. Yeah, so we're looking at 6.84. Just have to check underneath the camera there for a second. Um, 6.84, so we want to get as close to that as we can on this one. And uh, we can expect some volts drop. Let's see what it looks like on the device. This is 90 watts. It's going to be a pretty high, uh, pretty high hit. But let's see what it looks like. So it looks like we got up to 7.88, um, which is actually much higher than what it's reading out at. Let's try that again and see what it looks like. We're in that 7.9 range, so it's actually hitting hotter than or harder than what it says it is. Now, of course, these things aren't always the most accurate, but it is nice to know. Um, so again, you're hitting pretty high on this, 6.84, and it's hitting out at like eight. That is a lot, a lot of voltage. Actually, and there's no volts drop, obviously. It's actually hitting harder than what it's saying it is, which uh, might be a good thing, might be a bad thing but I'll leave that up to you guys. Let's do another test. Let's go up to, uh, actually let's scroll down. Let's go down to say, well, as my crown's starting to leak a little bit. Let's go down to 50 watts. So 50 watts is saying we should be at right around, come on, focus. All right, so 50 watts is saying we should be around 5.1 volts, uh, give or take. And uh, here we go, we're gonna fire it at 50 watts and see what it's actually reading out at. 5.7, so it's definitely hitting harder than what it's saying. Um, actually, you know what, let's just do this. One, two, three, four, five. Hold these down together. And we're now swift over. Okay, that's easier. So now we have a better view of this. 
I don't know why I didn't think of this before, but here we go. So 5.1 volts, let's see what it's hitting on here. You can watch it on this screen and this screen if you want to pause the video. 5.8 and uh, 5.1. So it's definitely hitting harder than what it's saying it is. Um, that's something good to know. So there's obviously minimal volts drop on this because it's actually hitting higher than what it's saying. Something that you may want to keep in mind. It'll, it'll be interesting to see how the uh, DNA does it on that. And we'll see if it's hitting higher as well, if it's hitting lower, if it's hitting the same. Something that's good to know and good to see. Just kind of uh, visually seeing it is, is always nice as well. So there you go guys, there is no voltage drop on that. Um, in fact, it's actually getting harder than what it's saying it is. All right guys, so that was the voltage test. What do you say we do a temp control test next and see how it performs on temp control? All right, it's time to check out the temperature control on the Wismec Rouleau RX200. On here we have the crown tank with the nickel coil in it. As you can see, we have it set to 400 degrees Fahrenheit in the nickel mode on the Wismec Rouleau. 0.15 ohms resistance at 58 watts. What we're gonna see here is see if it does have the temp protection on. This has been upgraded to version 1.07, which should be the latest version as of the recording this video. So let's check it out and see what happens. Temp protection. Temp protection. Let's see what happens if we crank it up a little bit. Let's go 450. Burnt a little bit, but again, stops itself. Temp protection. We're gonna go up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit and see what happens. Goes and then temp protection. Temp protection. So there you go guys. As you can see, it is burning on the initial hit initially, and then it pretty much stops it as, as soon as it goes into temp protection mode, which is good. So it is passing in nickel. Let's try out stainless steel and see how it works in stainless steel. All right guys, here we go. We are in stainless steel mode. If you can see that, stainless steel, 400 degrees Fahrenheit. This is the, uh, this is actually the stainless steel Clapton coils for the TFE4. We're gonna lock the resistance in. There we go. This is a brand new bone dry coil. This has never been used. Fresh out of the packaging and let's see what happens on this. 0.26 resistance, let's see how it works. Same thing, 50 watts. So let's hold it like this and just see what happens. Temp protection. Let's try it again. Temp protection. Try it again, temp protection. So at 400 degrees Fahrenheit, it is working on the on the stainless steel. I'll go to 460 degrees Fahrenheit and see if it works as well. Saying temp protection. I'm not seeing any smoke out of that, which is a really good sign. Uh, let's crank it all the way up to, uh, let's, let's go 530 degrees Fahrenheit and see what happens. Temp protection. Scrolling up. Maximum is out 600 degrees Fahrenheit. And let's see if it passes again. So 600, a little bit of smoke coming off, but it is stopping at, uh, yeah, so uh, it's stopping. So it hit off the very first time it was on 600 degrees Fahrenheit, but after that it immediately stopped and uh, the coil is still pretty much brand new and usable. All right guys, we're now moving on to the Wismec Rouleau DNA 200. We'll open the box first and foremost, get that out of the way. Get the DNA 200, or the Wismec DNA 200 in the box. Move off to the side, move off this uh, little styrofoam thingy. Go to the bottom here and here's what else you get. You also get a little instruction booklet just on how to use your batteries. If you wanna read that, you're more than welcome to as I have it upside down. Moving on from there, you also have a USB cable charger as well. It's a little bit more better packaged. You have the USB in here. Um, pretty much the exact same cable as the other one. The only difference is this one came with a box, the other one didn't. There it is here, pretty much the same thing. All they did was add a box to it. So uh, you have a box for the USB cable, I guess, if you really want one. Getting back to the device itself though, that's the main attraction. And we've already talked about the battery sled in here and how it does have reverse polarity protection and also how it has the capacitors um, to handle the button top batteries, which the RX200 did not. So there you go, guys. That's one thing I wanna point out. And that this one does have, this one also has a port as well for charging and for updates for the eScribe software. Again, I don't want to want to talk about the eScribe software too much in this, in this video. This video is going to be long enough as it is. If you don't know, if you're, if you're not familiar with the eScribe software, there are plenty of videos out there currently. Um, and again, if you can wait a week or so, I will have a video on the full review of the DNA 200 three-way that I'm doing with the Wismec, the VT200, and the Vapor Shark. And in that video, I will also have a review on the eScribe software. I may actually choose to do the eScribe software separately now that I'm thinking about it, It'd be a little bit quicker, but uh, moving on from there, like I said, the eScribe software we're not gonna talk about today, but it is something that's available. 
Now uh, you do have 105 watts right now is what it's set at. And I did mention this before, but the scrolling on the DNA chips is a pain. So you got two modes, slow and fucking hyperspeed. So it's really annoying trying to get to a precise wattage on this because it just goes so fast. It's hard to get to where you want it to be. Um, it's just one of those things where it's just a pain in the ass, to be honest. You're going to end up using this method of scrolling a lot more than you want to. Uh, it is something to point out just in case that makes a difference to people. Now, the one thing about the Uscribe software, I'm like, so I'm not going to talk about the actual software, but let's talk about what it can do. On the Uscribe software, you can actually change all these settings here so it'll display your resistance, um, your voltage, your temperature, 450 degrees Fahrenheit right there. Uh, you can actually change that up to be whatever you want. And uh, to give you an idea, I think I have a VT200 laying around here and I'll show you what my preferred setup is on that one. And I'll just give you a quick comparison of what you can do to customize it. All right guys, so I grabbed my VT200 here, um, which again will be featured in the DNA three-way review. But uh, here we go here, this is just a demonstration to show you the capabilities of the DNA chip and the customization to it. This is not even a sliver of what you can do to it, but this is just my personal preferred settings. You obviously have the resistance up top there. You also have the percentage of battery remaining as opposed to just this little battery bar. I just find it's a little bit more handy to find out percentage-wise what you're left at as opposed to just seeing this little battery drain in the picture here. I also chose to go with the seconds here. This actually measures my last hit. So if I take a hit off this device, it'll actually measure how much or how long my hit was. Um, and it stays on the screen until I take the next hit and just basically says the last hit that was taken in seconds on there. So I uh, just wanted to point that out. Again, there's so much customization to the eScribe software. If you want to check out more on it, you can definitely check out other videos on it. Um, and I'll have a video out on it either separately or part of the DNA three-way review later on as well. But just wanted to point that out. All right, so that should give you a rough idea of the uh, capability of the eScribe software. Like I said, now one thing I do want to point out is that the eScribe software is not compatible with Macs, at least not yet. That to me is a huge con because I'm a big Mac user. Um, I don't know what, big Mac. <laughs> Anyways, I'm a Mac user and I, I do like using Macs a lot for video editing and things like that. So to have to use a different computer just to use the eScribe software, I have to pull up my old laptop, my old Sony laptop and use it on that. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't be able to use it at all. But uh, just one thing to notice that the eScribe software is not compatible with Macs at the moment. Now it is locked right now. So one thing you can do is you can switch between normal and stealth mode. To do that, you hit the power button and the down button, hold them together. You have normal mode and stealth mode. Uh, if you hold the power button and the up button together, it'll lock your ohms. Uh, now this is while it's locked. So the screen is now locked now. We now go back here um, and we're back into the main screen here. Now, if you want to lock your screen, all you have to do is press the up and down button together. And you saw here, uh, it's now locked, power is now locked. So it'll actually lock in at that wattage mark. So I can't actually scroll through the, the uh, wattage. But if I do want to set up numerous profiles, what I do is I hit up button while it's in the power lock mode. So it's just up. And now I'm in profile two, profile three. I can go through all my profiles here. So we'll go to profile two. Uh, it's, I, I didn't actually set up any of these profiles to be honest, um, but you can set up different ones with different screen settings and everything, different resistances. Uh, so you can basically have a different, or not different resistances, but different wattages or different modes, temp modes, things like that, uh, just by going through your profiles. Now, if we go back, we just hold this up and down and now we're back into the regular wattage mode. So we can adjust it. Let's do that again. So it's up and down. We're locked and we can go, so it's basically going to be up or down to scroll through the profiles or if you, and once you're uh, into the profile you want, you can just go um, and select it and let it go or press the power button to select it. Now, once we're here again, it's going to be down and then down again to go into the profiles or up and then up again to go to the profiles. All right, guys, so we have the crown tank back on here with the 0.5 on coil. One thing I want to point out is that the volts are not measured immediately when you put the device on, uh, whereas the RX200 did have that volt, that 9 volt limit. This one actually just kind of goes. And you see it's going to 8, 8. Um, so it, it's not actually showing the maximum wattage on here. It's not maxing out. It'll max out at 200 watts regardless of the voltage. Um, now I don't know if it's actually hitting on that, but uh, I, I'm not really looking to burn this coil out anyways. Uh, so let's go back to 90 watts. And we'll do the volt test on here. All right, guys, so something for the volt test at 90 watts. Let's see what it looks like. Keep an eye on this screen as well as that screen. If you have to pause it, by all means, go ahead. Uh, this will be upside down, unfortunately, which sucks, but uh, hopefully it, you can bear with me on this and uh, check it out. So 7.73, 7.7, 6.96, 8.9, 8.9, 8.9, 8.9, 8.9, 8.9, 8.9, 8.9, 8.9, 8.9, 8.9, 8.9, 8.9, 8.9, 8.9, 8.9, 8.9, 
it looks like they're pretty accurate here. Uh, so from what I'm seeing, it's actually relatively accurate, which is nice. Let's go back down to 50 watts and uh, cycle down to that. And let's see how it performs at 50 watts and see if it matches up as well. Uh, this seems to be pretty much bang on. So it's just, it is showing you that the DNA 200 chip seems to be fairly accurate um, on the volt meters. But again, I'll have to pause the video here. And um, some of you might have to as well, because it's hard to focus on two parts at once while doing this test. So there we go, 50 watts. And of course it is upside down, which sucks, but uh, actually let's do the 50 watt test on this range and let's see if we can read it back. 5.75, 5.74, I just saw it there. So it is very accurate as I'm dripping out juice because I shouldn't be doing that. I probably burnt out the coil anyways. So there you go guys, the DNA 200 chip is almost bang on on the voltage, which is super nice. So you don't have to worry about it being about too much voltage drop. You don't have to worry about the, uh, the volts not matching up. Whereas we saw in the RX 200, the voltmeter was quite a bit higher than what the RX200 was actually reading out at. So it was hitting harder than what we expected and, and what we anticipated. This one is definitely hitting very nicely and almost dead on every time. And that's what you're gonna get from that DNA chip as well. So we've done the volt test. Let's uh, switch this into temperature mode and then we'll do a temp control test and uh, see how it performs in that. All right guys, it's time to test the temperature protection on the with a nickel coil on the Wismac Reload DNA200. And here we go, we're at 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, it's reading at, I think it's reading at 0.5 ohms, which is kind of strange to say 0.2 ohm coil. Um, 50 watts as well. Now, while this was not easy to set up, admittedly, this is a lot more challenging than the RX200. The RX200 seemed very simple in comparison. This one was much harder to do on the eScribe software, and I actually had to go do it up, or go do it on the eScribe software to, uh, to get this all set up. But here we go, 50 watts, 450 degrees Fahrenheit. We'll do the quick test with the nickel, then we'll move on to the stainless steel. So nickel coil, here we go, firing. And immediately you see temp control, no smoke coming out, so it's clearly passing. Temp protection, it'll flash on screen again, temperature protection, or temperature protected. And uh, same thing over and over again. So again, try and do it, it will not let you go. So it is passing on the nickel coil, but uh, make sure to set up properly, because if you do not set it up properly, it will actually fire anyways, uh, which is a major pain. So we'll take this off, and then what we'll do is switch to the stainless steel one, and see if it has the same results with the stainless steel. All right guys, we are back with the DNA 200 with the stainless steel Clapton coil on top. Now I've been playing around with this for quite a while actually. I went off camera for probably a good hour trying to get this to work and I just cannot seem to get it to work. Um, I went through all the settings on the eScribe software. I ended up going to a different program called the Wire Wizard from Steam Engine, which you can then create a custom CSV file and upload it to the eScribe software and then upload that to your device. Um, I built it pretty much on par with what it should be and it basically didn't come out at all. I'm in my third profile here, which is meant for stainless and it is not even close to working. In fact, if we look at the temperature protection, let's just watch this right here. It's gonna burn. I've been trying everything. I can't seem to get it to work. And you can see here, it's immediately igniting and just like instantly catching the cotton on fire. Uh, so the stainless steel temp control does not appear to be working very well. Uh, that's a major con to me. Now, I'm sure there's a way to make it work on here if you use the right settings and if you use the wire wizard correctly. But honestly, it's a huge pain in the ass that I just don't have time to waste on. I've already wasted an hour trying to get it to work and I'm done with this thing now. So the stainless steel, honestly, I don't think it's gonna work from my settings. If you can get a setting that works or find a setting that works, that's gonna be your best bet for sure. And again, if, if you can get a setting that works and you wanna let me know, by all means, let me know. I'd love to hear from you guys if you got a stainless steel coil working, but uh, I just can't seem to do it on here. And uh, just kind of backs up my point that it was so much easier on the RX200 than it was on here. I didn't have to jump through hoops. It was super easy to navigate. I didn't have to worry about connecting to a computer to do it. Everything was right there immediately. Now, of course, once you get these these uploaded into the device itself, into your profile settings, it's actually quite easy to go through your profiles and pick the one that you wanna choose. For example, two is now meant strictly for nickel. Got the temperature on there as well, things like that. But uh, it's just one of those things where it's so much of a pain to use it. I think the RX200 definitely wins the temp control test, not just on the pass and fail aspect of it, but also on the simplicity of it as well. It is super easy to navigate, and unlike the DNA 200, you do not have to jump through hoops to get it to work. Uh, so there you go, there's the temperature chest. Let's go back up top now and talk about these two devices and which one I recommend over the other. All right guys, after all of that, we are finally back up top to announce the winner. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we only actually have one set of married 18650 batteries, and I thought it'd be kind of cool to test out these devices and announce the winner by simply showing you which one is actually vaping. So both these are not really turned off, but you can't really tell right now which one actually has the batteries in it. I don't think at least. 
Um, I have the Crown Tank on this one, and I have the Z-Pal Coral Tank, which I'll review it on very shortly as well, uh, on the uh, RX200. So the big question is, which one do I think is the winner personally? This is only personal opinion, and I'll tell you my reasoning afterwards, but let's see which one's the winner, and we'll try vaping on both of them to figure out which one of these I've decided to crown the winner on this. So we'll start with the crown, speaking of crowns, and I'll see what, it, what happens. Nothing. That's right guys, this one does not have any batteries in it, which means the RX200 beats the DNA200, which is insane. Let's take a quick hit just to prove it. Let's go right now. Oh, love it. Love it. All right, guys. So ultimately what it came down to was a number of things. Now we did the temperature control test on both these devices and we saw that both of them passed with the nickel coil with no problem. However, the stainless steel was a big issue for me. The stainless steel temperature control on the DNA 200, I tried numerous settings, numerous different uploads, and all I kept doing was burning the coil over and over again. I went through three, three stainless steel clapping coils for this video, guys. I hope you guys appreciate it. And on the RX200, it actually kept the one I had used on that one perfectly preserved. It immediately recognized it was a dry coil and it did not fire. The DNA200, trying to get that stainless to work is a pain. I could not get it to work. I don't know what I was doing wrong. If you guys know what I'm doing wrong, let me know in the comments below. But for some reason, the DNA200 just did not like that stainless steel build or the stainless steel coil. The RX200 was super simple to navigate, which was a huge plus for me. Uh, on top of that, the biggest thing I liked about it was the 9 volt limit. So if you do reach 9 volts, it'll actually tell you what wattage you're actually vaping at and not try and you know bullshit you saying you're vaping at 200 watts when you're actually vaping at, let's say, 160. Um, so that was pretty cool as well. Now I do have to give credit to the DNA 200. It's not a bad device at all. It is a great device. Um, honestly, guys, the way it handled that voltage test, it was pretty much exact each time. It was hitting out the exact volts that it was saying it was every single time. The RX200 seemed to be hitting out a lot harder than what it was saying. So that's something you may want to keep in mind if you do end up getting one of these. Uh, it's probably going to hit harder than what you're, than, than what it, it would on most devices. Now, that being said, guys, ultimately though, the winner goes to the RX200 um, primarily on price point. The price point is a major difference. For the RX200, you're looking at about 80 bucks Canadian, um, or roughly, I think you can get them for about 60 bucks US, maybe even cheaper than that now. Uh, by the time you're watching this video, but it's about the 60 to 80 dollar range between US and, and Canada, and then the DNA 200 from the Wismac is 220 Canadian or right around the 170 range, I think, US, what I saw it at. So it is a pretty big t price difference between 170 and 60. You're talking over a hundred dollars price difference, and honestly, if these were both the exact same price, I hate to say it, guys, but I think I'd actually rather go with the RX 200 over the DNA 200. Um, now maybe that's because I already have two other DNA devices, but in all honesty guys, I really like this RX 200 chip. Now the only complaint I have and the only issue that's potential with this, and this is the end of the video where I told you I'd have a little sneak peek on something, is that there may not be reverse polarity protection on the battery switch. I've heard rumors, I haven't tested it out, but rest assured we will test it out. Where are we gonna test it out? Breaking mods. That's right guys, Breaking Mods is going to get this device next um, and we're basically gonna try and do whatever we can to break it, which is actually kind of depressing because I honestly think I'd rather see the DNA 200 um, on Breaking Mods as opposed to the RX 200. And I know, I know it sounds crazy, but I paid full full price for this DNA 200 Wismec Rouleau and I actually like the RX 200 better. And to say that, I didn't expect to say that going into this, but it's just so simple to use. It's super easy. You know, you miss it on some of that customization like that you have in the eScribe software for the DNA 200, which I briefly mentioned. But at the same time, guys, it's set up so simply and navigating is just a breeze on this device. Ultimately, that's what won it today. And that's personally my personal pick on this. Now, if you guys have different opinions in the comments below and you've tried them both and you either agree or disagree with me, by all means, let me know in the comments. If you want to call me an asshole, that's fine too. I don't blame you. Uh, I probably am an asshole, so what do I know? But yeah, so overall, RX200 gets the win on this video. 
Thank you everybody for watching and all your support out there. I really do appreciate it. Now, of course, as always, we're going to end the video on a good note. Um, like I said, we, we are going to unfortunately have to destroy this mod, which I'm actually very depressed about because I really like it. And I've gotten to like it over the last couple days since I've started using it. Um, I've had it for just over a week now and I'm, I've fallen in love with this thing. I mean, I use it every day. It's actually, it's probably actually getting used more than my DNA 200s. And I don't know why that is. I just, I'm leaning toward it more. I'm really enjoying this right now. And it's just got a great menu system that's easy to navigate. And again, I can't stress that enough because the DNA 200 is definitely a little bit more complicated. And it, it does have a lot more custom features, but at the cost of being much more complicated to use. So that's going to end it here, guys. Thank you all again for watching. Remember to like and subscribe if you like this video. If you didn't like this video, by all means, dislike it if you want to. Uh, let me know in the comments below, though, any con constructive criticism you may have that you didn't like. And, of course, I guess I'll uh, see you guys next time.